in conversation with J.P. McAndrew. J.P. McAndrew studied writing at Eastern Mishinga University, focusing on screenwriting. Venus in Twilight is his first novel. He dabbles in martial art, video and music production. He lives in Con Country, south of Han Harbor, Mishinga, with his wife, an orange cat, and two rescue dogs. And on today's episode of Auto Interview, it's my utmost player and joy to have on the show today, JP Andrew. How are you doing, James? I'm well now. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about yourself? I'm doing very fine too. It's lovely to have you on the show today, really. And I think it's we have nice a common background. We have a common object at the background. I'm seeing some guitar right there, and I'm seeing one attached behind me over oh, here, yes. and some behind yes. you too over there. So sounds you're like, a musician too. Sounds like a coincidence. Yes, I have. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's lovely to know, really. <laughs> yeah, so JP, could you tell us about your book, Venus in Twilight, a Love Story? I'd love to ask you, how does this book come about? What inspired you to write Venus in Twilight? I got to give you some spoilers in order to really talk about, and that's okay. I'm fine with that. Um, oh, okay. You know, but it, the 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 book is complex enough that even if I give you some spoilers, mm. people are still probably going to want to want to read the book. Oh, Sur surprise is very small uh, part of the story, but it started out uh, a few years ago. I was still working as an industrial electrician at a General mm. Motors plant. And we were working really, really hard. It was a lean manufacturing environment. And we were just exhausted all, all the time, working oh. all the time. But I sat down for lunch one day at lunchtime. And a co-worker sat down next to me. And I don't know who started the conversation. But one of us said, you got any plans for the weekend? I probably said that. And the co-worker said something really crazy. He said, yeah. The wife and my son and I are going to go out to dinner. We're going to go out dancing and we're going to go out and try and meet some women. And I said, wow. what? <laughs> that was like, he had to repeat it in order for me to, to really comprehend what he said. Cause it was just so, so out there. So, so crazy. Here in the United States, most marriages are monogamous. You know, oh. one woman, one man. He was in a relationship with his wife where it was getting worse and worse and worse. And oh. they were both starting to get angry because their needs weren't being met. Yeah. And she sat him down. He was getting angry. She was getting angry and frustrated. She sat him down one day and said, I'm a lesbian. Oh. oh, and Jesus. it came right out of the blue and uh, he didn't have any warning. And she probably was she probably gradually became aware of the fact, but she was not attracted to men anymore, more attracted to women. Oh. So they talked about divorce naturally, as most people would would do. I've met about four or five couples in my life that had a similar situation. They always get divorced. They talked about getting divorced. And then after years, you know, they were not in a hurry to do that. And they gradually realized that they loved each other too much mm -hmm. to get divorced and decided to stay married. So I'm thinking, number one, what would that feel like, you know, to be in a relationship like that? And my second thought was, there's got to be a way I can turn this into a book. Mm. So I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I started writing uh, the book about uh, about three and a half years ago. I actually, I started oh. with a screenplay. Oh. Started with a screenplay because I, that's the training that I had in college. I focused on screenwriting. Had a little prose uh, training in prose creative writing, too but I was focused on uh, screenwriting. So I wrote two drafts of the screenplay and sent it out to competitions and, you know, some producers and yeah. it's really hard to break in. And I said, uh, I got feedback from 
they have an industry in Hollywood called the coverage industry, where you send your manuscript to mm -hmm. a professional reader and yeah. they, you know, for a hundred dollars or so, whatever, they will send you a detailed critique of your work. Wow. And I got a, a, a paid for a couple of coverage and um, both of them said that the story was kind of superficial and there wasn't enough conflict in it. Oh. And, and Hollywood was probably not ever going to turn that into a movie. And I said, fine, maybe I should turn it into a novel now. So yeah. about two years ago, I started writing the novel based on the screenplay. Wow. That's actually a very beautiful concept. I mean, that's a beautiful team even to explore in a book. Sounds quite compelling. Sounds like an interesting and so astonishing too. read. I mean, yes. it's an uncommon thing yep. even. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about in your country, but polygamous relationships are very unusual in the United mm -hmm. States. As a matter of fact, their plural marriage is not legal in any state. Yet. They're trying in Utah where the Mormons, you know, are a majority mm -hmm. and uh, they're making some progress. And I think it ought to be legal in every state in the United States. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning. I love the send of it. And now for readers who haven't read the book yet, and without giving much information away, could we have a sneak of what I'd expect? I know you've talked a bit about it, but then could we still have a <laughs> sneak of what I'd expect in terms of themes picking up Venus in Twilight? Well, themes are acceptance, basically, and the mm. endurance of love. The endurance of there's love. Very, there's a little bit of sex in the book, oh. just a little bit to make it realistic. Uh, but... I don't consider it an erotic novel at all because it's just a small part of it. Okay. The main theme is the love between the main character and his wife. In spite of the fact that they don't have a sexual connection anymore, they still, they're still in love. They still love each other deeply and they don't, they're very reluctant to, um, to destroy that relationship. Wow. And like the real person, the real story that I based it on, mm. they finally, at the end of the novel, come to the conclusion that they'd rather stay together and stay married and date other people. Wow. Wow. That's... So it's, it's acceptance of a, a, a polygamous relationship or poly, um, polyamorous relationship, acceptance of the main character is autistic, slightly autistic, functioning autistic. So it's acceptance of autism and acceptance of lesbian love, women mm -hmm. loving women. And uh, it's, it's all about love. <laughs> yeah, thank you for mentioning. The, the sound of the book is quite uncommon and quite, it sounds quite fascinating actually. It's nice to hear about this, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Now I'd love to ask you too, James, you know, as authors, we all have different ways of reacting the feedbacks and criticism of our works. And I'm curious yes. to know your opinion about criticism. How do you react to negative reviews of your books in case I've ever had one in time past? So far, I haven't gotten any negative reviews. I've had, um, it's available on Amazon, Kindle yeah. Unlimited. And so far, I've had a couple of people stop reading at the Incit Inciting Incident where the main character finds his wife in bed with the next door neighbor. Oh, because and I, I have a theory about that because they are they are such sweet people that this is totally unexpected and it's shocking. But I wrote it so that the reader would be just as shocked as the main character when he discovers it. Oh, wow! It's meant to be a shock, and I think some people, you know, it comes out of left field. Some people cannot handle that. Mm. So we had two readers on Kindle Unlimited quit right there, and I can track their progress. Oh, <laughs> so uh, my advice to somebody that wants to, you know, feel the experience, get past that point. It's on page sixty-two, I think. Get oh. past that. It gets better after that. You will oh. not be as shocked. You'd be surprised because <laughs> you won't be as shocked as that point right there. Yeah, well, thank you for your advice. Yeah, thank you for your advice. And I'm hoping that would be a reader would love to utilize it. 
Now, apart from Venus in Twilight, do you also have any other works you've altered or say currently working on? I always have a list of stories uh, that I've been working on ever since I was in college. And gradually, I'm knocking them off one by one. I prioritize them in the order of how much fun I think they're going to be to write. Mm. My last work was uh, a screenplay that didn't do very well <laughs> oh. when they started up Amazon Studios. Uh, Amazon Studios is a real big thing. But when it was a new operation back in 2010, I submitted a screenplay there. And I think it's still got potential. And eventually, I'm either going to uh, rewrite it and send it out as a screenplay again or rewrite it as a novel because I think it's got really good potential as a novel. And I've, you know, dealt with a learning curve for novel writing this time. Mm -hmm. And I found out it was intimidating before I started the process because I was used to screenwriters, you know, screenwriting. Oh. But now that I've written the first novel, it's not that hard. It, I can do it. <laughs> it's not that intim in intimidating. More words, yes, more pages, but you follow the same principles. Keep your language simple. Just tell the story. Don't get hung up on style. Just persevere. And it's mm. uh, it's doable. So that'll probably be the next thing I do. Oh, wow. This is quite amazing, really. I love your take on this. And now let's talk about inspirations and ideas which is one of the things that surprises me about our writers, especially novelists like yourself, craft long sentences and bring words together in a way that it makes an eventual great novel. And this always leaves me thinking, how exactly did they got the ideas to write this book? How exactly did they got the inspiration for all of this? And as far as writing is concerned, I would love to ask you too, James. How do you get your inspirations and ideas for your books? Where did they come from? Well, obviously for this one, it, it was the conversation with the coworker. Um, oh. I have an idea that I'm outlining right now that started out as research for another idea. I started right about the same time I got the idea for this novel. I was outlining a comedy satire that was kind of a mashup of the the Kung Fu TV series and the Bonanza TV series. I don't know if you have those in Nigeria, but it was a comedy mashup. And then I uh, set in the 1880s in the, the American Southwest where the Chinese cook was actually a renegade Shaolin priest, like in the Kung Fu TV series. Oh. And right about that time, I read an article that had a list of characters that were becoming uh, coming into the public domain. So therefore, you could write them without worrying about uh, being sued for copyright infringement. And I saw that Fu Manchu was uh, one of those characters mm. that was, you know, fair game for the public. So I said, wouldn't it be fun to have Fu Manchu in this story? Mm. The arch villain, you know, I don't know if you've seen any of the movies or read any of the comics or any of the books. I started researching uh, Fu Manchu. And it turns out that his biggest goal was uh, destruction of the British Empire. And I said, holy cow, he's the good guy. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, Ni Nigeria was a colony of the British Empire, right? At one yeah, time. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So what would... What would happen if you realized that Fu Manchu was actually the hero of the story? Oh, that would be. He gets together all these oppressed, colonialized people, colonized yeah. people into a cartel yeah. to bring about the destruction of the British Empire. Absolutely. So uh, that's on my list of things to write somewhere oh, in the wow. near future. Wow. That is quite amazing, really. And I love your concepts. And your answers to these questions, they really made for an interesting discussion and an interesting read. So thank yeah. you. Thank you for answering. Thank you. I love the sound of it. Thank you. That was quite fun. And now, before we proceed, I'd love you to show the book to the camera just so we see what it looks like. If you have a copy, a sample mm -hmm. copy there. 
And now, would you love to tell us about how you came about the style to Venus in Twilight and also how you came about the cover design? Like, yeah, I don't know if you have a message behind that. The, um, I told the cover designer, who, by the way, is Michelle Garvin. She's living in Sweden now. Oh, she reached out to me on Facebook and uh, I told her I wanted something ethereal and cosmic, um, something something different may have been a mistake because it you can't nail down what genre this is but it's a it's a complicated story i can't nail down what genre it is either it's not oh. it's not a typical romance it's not a, it's not erotic it's not a mystery or thriller or science fiction it's none of those it's got <laughs> elements it's got elements of a romance it's got yeah. elements of uh, an erotic novel yeah but it's mostly about relationships and, uh, and sexuality and social uh, social norms, social expectations. You know what society expects out of what the individual requires to live a free life, mm -hmm. to live the way they feel like they have to live. Uh, so it's it's hard to pin down. I would say it's a literary novel, except it's probably not classy enough to get to be considered literary. Oh, so nice. it's a dilemma. So that's that's the cover we ended up with. And I'm going to give it another month. And if sales don't start picking up, then we will have to redesign the cover and make it look like a romance. Oh, that's a great concept. <laughs> to get some sales. Well, I, I, I think it would be good to classify it under just American literature. Yeah. Because there are also okay. different teams in there. I mean, and those yeah. things are actually expected for whoever is reading. So it's a beautiful one. We don't be classified under American literature, just like we have African literature, Nigerian right. literature. Yeah. If you find, if you've written a book, you're not so sure of how to class. Even the one I'm currently writing, I'm not so sure. People ask all journalists, I said, please, it's just African literature. Because I don't know how to classify it. It's not, it's, it's not particularly fantasy or thriller or modern mystery. All these, all romance of that boys, just typically an African literature, yeah. So that could go well as an American literature, yeah. <laughs> I'm just giving you an advice, really. <laughs> well, I will opinion. take it into consideration because it seems uh, it makes makes sense. Oh, sounds nice. Thank you, thank you. And now, is there anything that you love to share with the viewers about your book? that we did not mention in this interview, and I'd love the viewers to know. I think I've covered just about all the important uh, qualities of the book. Uh, um, I I don't know what to add at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you might want to give us some advice for writers who are still struggling with publishing a book, if you have any words for people like that. Just persevere, because... You think you think the writing is hard. Just wait till you get involved in the marketing. It's a nightmare, oh. and it's a <laughs> that's a learning curve that was unexpected for me. Yeah. I thought you know write a great novel, put it out there, and magically, as if by magic, people would start buying it hundreds oh. at a time. You know, no, <laughs> it doesn't happen for anybody. I was checking. I set up. Uh, a, an account for Amazon ads yesterday, and I was comparing my sales to other writers that I respect. Robert oh. A. Heinlein, the science fiction writer. Charles Baxter, the literary. Uh, he was uh, very popular 10, 15 years ago, the author of uh, The Feast of Love. He's oh. not making any money from his books either. Oh. You know, so it's, it's not just me. It's a struggle for everybody. As you know. We don't. We all know that writing itself is not an easy task. But then, to me, the writing part to me sounds a bit easier compared to the marketing, because the marketing is where the actual work lies in. That's where the all of the work lies in. And again, you know, the success of any business of any book relies on the marketing. You know how well people are aware yeah. of the book. How you know how exposed it is. You know things like that. That's yeah, that's uh, so. It's quite, it's quite relatable, actually, and quite understandable. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, before we call it a day today, 
Would you love to read a short section of your book to the audience? It could be your favorite line, page, or paragraph if you love to. Let's see. I'm going to read the section where the main character meets his wife. Okay. Let's do that. This 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 actually happened to me. Oh. <laughs> it's, but I, you know, I found a way to write it into the into the novel. <laughs> Uh, it, this scene takes place at a place called Pine Knob, which is a, a popular concert venue close to where I live. And oh. this happened to me in the mid '80s, and I can't remember which uh, music, which musicians that I was there to see, but I distinctly remember it. Um, I got lost in my own mind while I was waiting for the concert to start. Oh. And I was staring out in the space. Honestly, I was probably thinking of story ideas or, you know, uh, how to write a scene in the screenplay, something like that, which is something I would have done. Character, main character and his best friend are in the venue. Yeah. Brad looked at his watch again. An hour before they start, I'm going for a beer. Stay right here. Alex sat on the low wall that contained a flower bed. He felt mellow. The marijuana had loosened the shackles of his mind, but he hadn't had enough to make him stupid. The problem with search engines, he said. Web crawler was a good start, but it was as if they stopped in the middle of the development process. Even Larry Page was having a hard time with it. And that guy was brilliant. They needed a way to prioritize results. What if you could somehow give more weight to the uh, recent pages? more weight to the popular pages, maybe a few simple lines of code tracking incoming links. And like magic, the lines of code appeared in his mind. How would you generate revenue? There would be no way, a way to put all, uh, there would have to be a way to pay for all of this. Advertising? Alex snapped out, his rever out of his reverie. Brad was handing him a red plastic cup full of beer. Looks like you've made some friends, Brad, pointed across the walk opposite them. Alex realized he was staring in the direction of a beautiful woman, about his age, with blonde hair and blue eyes and a fantastic figure, barely contained by a tank top and cut off jeans. The blonde's female companion glared at him and gave him the finger. She thought he'd been staring at them when he'd really been looking into the future of the search engine. Oh. Alex was stoned enough to forget that he was awkward and shy. He smiled and waved. The comp companion stood, pulled the woman to her feet, and led her away. He looked back at them as they walked off, but the blonde looked back. Alex waved again. Wow, he said, what just happened? Look at you, Brad said, getting friendly with a babe. Alex shrugged, I'm a little high, he said. You're welcome, Brad said. And that's how Alex and Lucy wow. met. And then it turns out that uh, six weeks later, they have the same wow. appreciation class together. That's amazing, really. I love your recitation. Sounds great to me. Thank you. Thank you for reading. Thank you. Thank and just you, in Dean. case we have any viewers, just in case we have some people who are currently watching this interview, I would love to get a copy of your book. On what platform is it available on for purchase? It's on Amazon.com. I'm not sure where you would get it in Nigeria. Um, Amazon.com uh, to, yeah. Or, pardon me? Amazon.com to the ships to Nigeria everywhere. Oh, okay. All right. I know Amazon does, but it, I was under the impression that different continents had their own different stores, you know, yeah, Amazon, yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah. Well, that's good. And uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks, I'll have the distribution worked out with Ingram Spark. Interesting. It's been a challenge so far to get through that gate, but uh, I'll be working on that uh, the next thing that I do. Great. And I left a link in the discussion part of this interview well, interested viewers can get a copy of J.P. McAndrew book directly on Amazon and also on other platforms. So thank you so Very much, good. James, for accepting the invitation to be featured on P. English Literature. It's awesome having this conversation with you. Well, thank you, Peter. It was a delight. Uh, I'm sorry for the technical problems. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, yeah. <laughs> well, you know